Hey, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Tom Vecchio of FanDuel, who rounds out his FanDuel roster for this weekend by giving us his top value plays on the board. What's going on, Tom? I'm doing good. You know, plenty of injuries to pay attention to, plenty of values to get to, so let's hop in. Let's break it down, and let's begin with Tua Tagovailoa's first NFL start, but we're not focused on Tua. We're focused on Tua's running back, and that is Miles Gaskin. Gaskin has been fantastic throughout this season, claiming the starting job in week one and not letting go of it here thus far. Gaskin is in an interesting spot in Tua's first start, but I like the Dolphins this week, and I think Gaskin could be in store for a big game. I also like the Dolphins this week going up against the Rams, who are on a short week. They played on Monday night, traveling west to east, playing in a 1 p.m. game, really shaping up to be a solid spot, I think, for the Dolphins. Now, if we look at the Rams, they are bottom 10 in the league for most targets, most receptions, and most yards allowed to opposing running backs. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it. We know that they bring uh, plenty of pressure with Aaron Donald, and then the quarterbacks have to check down the ball. Combine them with the fact it's to his first start, they might be checking down the ball anyway, and I want to be looking to Miles Gaskin even more, who has 21 total touches or more in three of his past four weeks. He's the third most targets on the Dolphins. He's coming in at $5,700, and even if the Dolphins you know, happen to keep this game close, we know that uh, he gets the red zone work for the rushing game. He has the red zone uh, you know, targets for the Dolphins. Really kind of a sneaky spot for them, and I like Gaskins this week. It's weird because if Brian Fitzpatrick was in the lineup, I would feel really confident on the Dolphins. But Tua, you just don't know what to expect. But with Miles Gaskin, you do. Priced at under $6,000. He's been great all year. And if he's going to get checkdowns now from Tua in this debut, well, a lot to like here against this Rams defense. Up next, we move to the Rams division rival, the San Francisco 49ers, specifically Brendan Ayuk, who's $5,900 this week on FanDuel. And there's no Debo Samuel in the lineup. The Niners are also without four running backs, which means Ayuk, you imagine, is going to be involved heavily in the offensive game plan, whether it's running the ball on a reverse, just from the backfield straight, or catching passes. Brandon Ayuk, as a playmaker in this offense, is going to be, going to be heavily involved. I certainly hope so. Breaking down the 49ers on a week-to-week -week basis is always interesting. They seemingly have, you know, 19 different running backs that they're going to be using. We know what George Kittle brings to the table. And then we have Brandon Ayuk, who has been relatively consistent for them. He has five targets or more in four of the past five games. He has the second most targets on the team with 33, the most red zone targets on the 49ers with six. And he's sitting up with the highest snap percentage among wide receivers with 71. The matchup this week is absolutely fantastic. Going up against the Seahawks, a team we've been targeting week after week because they are allowing 49.2 FanDuel points per game to opposing wide receivers. That is dead last in the league. So we have a receiver who now has an expanded role just because the 49ers have so many injuries to deal with. And we have a fantastic matchup. Uh, 53 over under in this game. Both teams with implied team total sitting over 25. Another six or so targets for him, hopefully getting into the end zone. You could find the end zone here this week. It'll certainly be worth his price tag of $5,900 in a great spot. He's Brandon Ayuk here for the Niners this weekend. Finally, we move over to the tight end, and this is an interesting one. It's Jimmy Graham of the Chicago Bears, $5,400. They're on a short week as well. The tight end position has been tough throughout the year. Why is Jimmy Graham on your radar here this weekend? So one of the main reasons is that Allen Robinson is in the concussion protocol for the Bears. He leads the team in targets. Jimmy Graham is second on the team with 41 targets. Now we're recording this, you know, midday Thursday. We don't have the final word on Allen Robinson. So this is kind of like an if then what, you know, like if Allen Robinson is out, then we can play Jimmy Graham. And I think that's really the only situation. Uh, the Saints are allowing 15.8 fatal points per game to opposing tight ends. That's the second worst in the league. So it is a good spot for him. You know, the over-under is not super high. It's only sitting at 44 in this game. So we have to pay attention to the Allen Robinson news because if he is out, Jimmy Graham, second on the team in targets, is in the spot to continue producing against what is a, a weak Saints defense. Without Allen Robinson, someone's going to have to step up for the Bears. Someone's going to get the ball from BDN. And maybe it's Anthony Miller, or hopefully for us, it's Jimmy Graham. Priced very favorably this week. It's certainly inexpensive. And the tight end position is always a crapshoot. So maybe Jimmy Graham's worth playing on Sunday. That's going to do it for us here at the FanDuel Hurry Up Time. We appreciate the time. Good luck this weekend. Same to you. Talk to you next week. Absolutely. And we'll wrap up our Week 8 coverage tomorrow as Jim Sonnes will join me as we take a look at the top stacks here for this weekend. For Tom Vecchio, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy Thursday Night Football tonight, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.